Hello and welcome everybody. So today we're going to be playing with some fittings, if you didn't get the title, I guess. Uh, I've got a bunch of different things, if you can see back there. We've got some like magnetic ball valves and I got some new monsoon fittings, just, well not new, but they're EV2s. So we'll be putting in a bunch of those. Uh, I have actually like no idea how I'm going to get these all in there. Uh, I'll kind of explain more what the magnetic ball valves are for as I go. But uh, it's gonna be interesting. What up? We got somebody in Discord too. Oh, it's Gerald. Okay. What up, Gerald? And Zeke is on YouTube. What's up, Zeke? How's it going, man? I was gonna say, I'll be chilling in Discord because, like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing with these fittings. So if anybody wants to come in and either laugh or help, both is appreciated. We're all here for the laughs anyways. So let's see, let's switch to it's on sweet iced tea. What's up, man? Is hey. this the one we want? No, we want this one, I think. Yeah, that'll work. So, these are the magnetic ball valves from Alpha Cool, and that's what I'm kind of working on figuring out in this area here because they got to come off the radiator. And what these are going to be for is so I can bypass the radiator, and I've got these pretty fancy schmancy coolants. Uh, quick disconnects and it's actually a quick disconnect and a bulkhead so this fitting here is going to go on like the front of the case here and then I'll be able to put some tubing to another rad and just connect it up and with the magnetic ball valves and these handy dandy switches I can just shut off flow to the radiator and therefore test the radiator outside of the kind of complex but I think I can figure it out but I'll appreciate anybody's help or input. So I'm actually, I can't see chat right now, but that's okay. If you guys have questions, just keep asking and hopefully I can get to them all. Gerald, if you guys see questions unanswered, just yell at me. I'm playing that Overwatch. Oh, oh, okay. So you're just listening. I see. No, I'm at, I have a double screen. Oh, there oh, you go. Here. What a beast. Also playing Overwatch. Oh boy. You guys. Uh, so. I'm sorry, but Reinhardt's just sexier than you are, man. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Although he's just a 3D render, but I guess that's hard to compete with anyways. So... Yeah, but he's my 3D render. <laughs> yeah, right, anybody can get in. Come on. I think what I might have to do is take the pump out, because I need to get these... These ball valves um, are not small, if you couldn't tell. The, the top actually rotates. And the ball valves need to go right off the radiator. I guess they could go in line everywhere, but I wouldn't probably put them in line with uh, with just tubing because these would definitely make it sag. If you guys watched my last stream, I think it was on Monday, I got these two tubes done for this loop. But uh, actually, I got the whole loop technically done. But uh, these have to go in, and now it's changing. So I kind of thought that would happen anyways, but I had to do a stream Monday. So we're doing stuff over again today if you guys don't mind. I think, I don't know. What do you guys think? If I need to get both these ball valves off of this radiator here, and one of them, so I'm gonna have this, this one go to the res, so this is technically the res going to the rad. Then the rad is gonna have to go back to the pump. So I'm not even sure if like this is ideal right here. That's actually kinda a pain in the butt to deal with. 
But I could just like kind of replan how the loop even works. There's always that option. What do you guys think? I might just try to go for getting this first ball valve in here and see if I can do that. And then I'll try to, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do to get this, <laughs> the rad out to the pump in. That's a, that's a mess. I might have to take this dual rotary out. Who knows? If you guys want to know, I got some monsoon EV2 fittings, like I mentioned. These things are actually pretty dope. If you guys haven't actually checked out all the different compression fittings we have, these are actually among like the cheapest, and they're actually pretty freaking nice for how much you spend on them because they come with like a whole bunch of O-rings. So these are technically one half by five eighths compression fittings for rigid tube, but with the two different size O-rings, you can use it for 12, 16 millimeter tubing as well. They have this little sizing chart thingamajigger here, and then you just use the red bag if your tube fits up here, just like this. And then you just use the white bag if your tube happened to be down there. Pretty interesting. So they're kind of versatile fittings. They have two O-rings in them. Uh, and then you actually get two bags of black and white with these, I guess. Maybe they're different colors and the other colored fittings uh, for the other side, the G and a quarter side. So they give you like a whole pile of O-rings. So you'll like never run out. And it's kind of cool. All for pretty cheap. I got a 12 pack. I think it's 57.50. So... Definitely one of my favorite fittings if you're trying to work somewhat on a budget and aesthetically, I don't know, they still look pretty legit to me. That's why I never got any seem too big for my past circumstances. I like the idea of those ball valves for a large build though. Yeah, they are like really not the easiest to implement. Although, like, I mean, the actual valve itself is the same size as any other ball valve basically. It's just this nice big old magnetic motor up here that uh, is going to be a pain in the butt. So, do we remove the pump, or do we just wing it and see if we can get this line done at least, and then I'll have to just figure out how to get <laughs> from here to here. Like, it's right next to each other, which honestly makes it harder than the two points were a lot further apart. So I'm wondering if, so I got like a bunch of different fittings. If you guys saw me on Monday, I was using all these uh, like black nickel fittings because they're just what I have laying around. I picked up some more um, just EK angled adapters, but these are just matte black. I'd like it to be all matte black, and then I am I got one 12-pack of white compression fittings, and then I'm going to get another 12-pack of red compression fittings for the GP loop. Oh, and actually, I know what I could show you guys that would definitely be interesting if and when I get this done. I mean, I plan on getting this, this CP loop working this weekend as long as I have all the fittings that I need, which I might. <laughs> I'm thinking I might just have enough. Uh, but I got a bunch of cryo chills cooling to test. Well, it's actually UFO Technologies. I don't know why it says cryo chills on it because it technically is opaque line. And I'll just show it to you guys here. So this is the bottle of gray that he makes for me. This is just gray opaque. Can you guys actually? It's it's pretty. It's actually a pretty good gray in my opinion. So I might uh, be throwing that in my loop once I get this test bench up and running. So I can be down for a couple days. I'll probably like clean. But it doesn't look anything like Spooky Ghost. What? Spooky Ghost? It's called Cosmic Gray Matter is what he named it. And then, well, I'll probably throw in the it's CPU not loop. not a ghost. It's something from a zombie's body. Really? Okay. <laughs> I, I, got, I don't know. It's, I've got to... Uh, something for the name that's creepy and somehow I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, some alien green opaque. So this is probably what I'll throw in this loop to test. Obviously, it does not match the color scheme at all. This is actually it UV. Like I um yeah, dude. It's like really yellow green. It's an interesting green, and when you put it under UV, it's actually it, it looks pretty legit. It won't like match at all in this loop, but whatever. It'll be a good test. Or I guess I could also try out this. He hasn't actually released yet. This is um 3D starlight white. Oh, it says blue UV at the end. Ooh, so I should put this under UV light too. So this is 3D white. This is like his actual crowd chill stuff. Um, so it's a 3D coolant. And apparently it has blue UV in it as well. It's kind of tough to see as it being white, but I think once you get in a loop, it might be pretty neat looking. So maybe we'll test that on Monday. And then I've got this cosmic purple. Although in my opinion, it looks pretty darn pink. So I'm actually going to have one of my mods probably test this coolant in... Her loop 
just because I, I don't have four loops to test all this in. So I figured uh, someone else could give it a shot and test at the same time. That way we can get you guys... I already have an idea who you, who you picked. <laughs> who I... Oh, yeah. Take one guess. So, I don't know where to go with this for the ball valves, but we're going to see if actually just adding that 90 there, and then we'll throw a mail to mail. These things you actually have to, I noticed you have to do the right direction of the flow. It has an arrow on it, so we got to keep that in mind. So the flow is going this way, so we're going to want this to go on here. This thing's all dusty. How did that happen? Oh. So I actually don't even know. I wonder if this is gonna like sag and hit the fan. It's actually sitting on the frame like this, but it's also not high enough up. But I could use another extension right there, maybe. I don't know, guys. Like I said, this stream is gonna be pretty chill. We're just trying to figure out fittings here, and it may be a lot of just uh, guess and check method. That's how I pass calculus, so it worked for that. It might work for this. So I'm using these male to male rotary fittings so I can actually like position the ball valve the correct way. Except for these things are being a pain in the butt to screw in. It screws in on the ball valve and then it won't screw it on the fitting. Uh, okay. So yeah, I forgot I had that 20 mil extension sitting right there. So that might actually, this might be the way we want to do this. Unless y'all got a better idea. Has anyone posted a review of UFO after using it for any lengthy amount of time? I'm not yet convinced to put it in my loop since it's new and seemed to come out of nowhere. The description of the product says it only has six months of testing. Well, he's tested it for years actually, but he's had it run in loops for over six months at a time. And... I've tested it for several weeks at a time, and actually the first test loop that I ran that stuff in, uh, it didn't actually perform all that badly. It, it did stain the tubes, although it was a soft tube loop, and you can pretty much expect some form of staining out of most any cooling in soft tube loops. But there was like very little, like there's a little bit of particle buildup on the reservoir after a few weeks, but it never really got any worse than just one little spot on the reservoir. Um, then I tried another batch in one of these, in a loop in the Define S that I have with one of these custom reservoirs, and that was a bad idea, just because it's not even at all recommended to use if you have any, uh, like a bay res, a bay pump res. Those, like, destroy that coolant. And I'm not even sure how view works with that. You probably have to ask Primo Chill, but the the 3d coolant that ufo has it just gets destroyed by anything like i think it's just the square shape so it has a lot of flat spots for it to fall out and that's what it did in that reservoir just all fell out in the bottom after about two weeks so but i mean technically it wasn't bad because if you just picked up the pc and shook it it would all go back in like it wouldn't ever be stuck that's a good idea yeah, it's like, it, it works fine. It's not going to damage your loop, but it does seem to sometimes, if you don't have the right flow in your loop, it will just have some mica fallout in the low flow spots in your loop, which, like I said, it really doesn't damage anything. But yeah, you get that little bit of particle fallout or buildup. And Daniel said that he, in a lot of his loops, he doesn't get it too bad, but there's always almost a little bit of it to a certain degree. He's just always said that like he doesn't mind it too much, so I don't know. It's up to you. 3D coolants, in my opinion, are... I, I wouldn't run any 3D coolant from any brand in my personal loop, just because I like to make sure that it's always running. And I guess with any 3D coolant, there's just always the chance that something goes wrong. So I'm just putting these O-rings in here, because they actually come with no O-rings in the fittings. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. Because, you know, put them each in carefully. But, uh, like I said, having the option of switching them out is usually pretty nice. So I think this ball valve, they're actually, oh no, that's actually, if I, see, now it's going to sit on the fan. I would need to make, if I made a fan grill, I could do this. Like, if I, I mean, I have these ones. I could get Jeremy to print me some more. But this is obviously for a 140 mil fan. But, if I had, say, a fan grill sitting on here, 
suppose that wouldn't be too bad. It is actually like pushing it up a little bit. I think overall, I mean, it's not gonna, the fitting isn't gonna leak as long as I tighten everything up. So, I don't know. That might be the way to go. I gotta see if I can get this guy. Because we have some 180s. I have one 180 down here. Because it's gonna go from the ball valve here and then to the reservoir. And then I'm gonna have another tube going out to the front with this bulkhead sticking through. So then when I cut off flow, like I said, attach a radiator and bada bing, bada boom. I suppose it's still pretty hard to follow. Oh, I hate these little mail to mails. So usually you don't want to do this, but if you have like a paper towel and you have a fitting that's stuck, I always kind of just like either put it on the pliers or wrap it around the fitting and hopefully not scratch it <laughs> to get it off with your pliers. Otherwise, usually you don't want to use any tools. As far as I do water cooling, I never really use tools to tighten fittings on or off. Because you can scratch them really easy. Nice. Paper towel safety. So what are you two doing besides playing Overwatch? Are you guys working on any kind of builds? How about anybody in chat? Don't use Primo oh, Chill, I... they won't be responsible for anything, not even giving any warranty. Oh really? So you're saying I should swap off of the Primo Chill stuff that I was gonna buy that just came back and stopped? I don't, that's just what someone said in Twitch chat. Um, and then Calf TC's asked, does Primo Chill view build up the same way? Uh, I don't think it's exactly the same way because as both Primo Chill and UFO will argue is their coolants are not at all the same. Um, UFO is a mica based coolant, whereas Primo Chill View is a 3D effect coolant. And you'd actually have to talk to like Elliot from Primo Chill, the guy who made it, um, and he could describe to you exactly what that means. But uh, no, Primo Chill View doesn't exactly build up the same way. It, it kind of will look the same because all like stuff will fall out and get like stuck in your GPU block or whatever if something goes wrong with it. Uh, so it does look similar in that sense so that's not even low enough yet being it i have a little extender right here i'm running out of really, extension. You're talking about uh builds being worked on i just uploaded to build sharing i've got pretty much everything without the water cooling stuff that's out of stock nice it, like yesterday nice work man wish g skill software was compatible with azrock motherboards but yeah, other than that oh it's not uh, at least not yet. <laughs> not yet. That's kind of frustrating. Yeah. Hopefully they update it. So even that still isn't quite low enough, I don't think. Like, we could probably put the tube in here. And, yeah, it'll be at an angle. If I had another little extension down there, it would work. But I need, like, a female to female. Ugh! Oh, it's so close. Hmm. What to do? Do you guys have any ideas? Fitting, like, this is just kind of going to be a headache for a while until I see the light and figure out which way to get these all to go in. Um, hmm. Maybe having it like an angle like that is a bad idea. It's just a pain in the butt to install this thing vertically because I think I'd have to take the pump off. Not quite sure. I was talking to Elliot when he was making it. He's kind of disappeared after the release. Yeah, he um, he's actually on Discord right now. Uh, I don't know if that's the best place to talk to him. Not certain how he likes to handle that. But, uh, yeah, right after release, they really kind of just got slammed with it. And that's when kind of just it didn't work out so well for a while. I think they're getting on top of it now as far as I know, though. Who really knows? You probably have to work at Primo Chill to actually know what's going on. <laughs> But it's a work in progress, I think, just like Cryo Chills is. Like, technically, like someone said, it came out of nowhere. Um, I had never heard of it until he had approached us, or uh, my boss, rather, he approached. And ever since then, we've, we've carried it. And it seems, I've tested it, and it, it seems to be all right. However, I guess it's not going to damage your loop. I just don't like dealing with maintenance especially on like my own personal rig just because 
there's quite a decent chance with any kind of 3D coolant, you could have a issue and then you're going to be down for a little while cleaning everything. However, with this test bench, once I get this thing done, I'll be able to test coolants kind of whenever I want, just because one, this shouldn't be too bad to clean, and two, I really don't actually need this PC um, functioning 24-7 as far as I'm concerned. I will use it to stream, but I can make do if it were to actually go down because of a coolant I was testing. Uh, I might have to use the pliers again because this fitting does not want to tighten up without the bottom coming out. And these male males actually do have a flat spot on them, but uh, it's not really meant for a tool, I don't think. So hopefully within the next week here, like I said, I want to get this loop hopefully operational by Monday so I can test coolants. Otherwise, I guess on Monday, I'll be trying to finish this thing up with you guys somehow if I have enough parts, just not enough time. <laughs> uh, but I should also probably, would you guys be interested in seeing the stream where I wire these pumps? Because if you didn't know, or not pumps, uh, switches or magnetic ball valves. So if you couldn't tell, they just have a Molex bar with two pins. So it's literally just power. And Jeremy down the mod shop tested them for me. So when you plug them in, the valve opens, I believe, because it's probably closed right now. Uh, yeah, so it's closed right now. And it'll open when power is applied. And it really wouldn't be that useful. Like, I have no idea why Alpha Cool wired them like this. Like, you have to plug them in for it to open. So technically, if I wanted to use them for their purpose without putting in a switch, I'd have to reach in and plug them in and unplug them every time I wanted to use them, which is kind of frustrating. So, I bought these switches off Amazon, and they're just handy dandy little toggle switches, and we'll wire these in, and if you guys wanted to see me do that, like it's just going to be some soldering and whatnot, but I can show you guys that too, if you would like. There is still a lot to do, if you could not tell. So, let's keep struggling with this male to male fitting, let's see if I can get it. So I can... Tug it on, you let the water flow through, toggle it off. And then it'll stop the water. So when I toggle it off, technically, I think I'm going to reverse wire this switch. Because like I said, power on opens it. And I want it to always be open until I flip the switch. So technically, the switch will be wired backwards. Uh, because when I close it, that'll be when I attach a radiator externally with the bulkhead fittings. And then I flip the, the two ball valves. So the one loop right here, or the one radiator right here, is no longer getting any flow. And so the, why don't you just get a butterfly valve? A butterfly valve? Or, uh, sorry, um, oh. Just a regular ball valve? Yeah. I was thinking about that. However, then I have to reach in and turn the valves. And if I can get these to work, I can just wire them so there's a switch at the front of the case right next to the bulkheads, or the quick disconnect bulkheads. So then I literally just flip two switches and plug the bulkhead or the disconnects in and you have another radiator in the loop in like five seconds. You're going for the fighter jets uh, toggle thing, aren't you? Yeah, they actually do have like, they have an LED on the end and everything, so they should look pretty interesting. I mean, it's a black, red, and white build is what I ended up deciding on just because the motherboard is black and red, but I like white too. So, it should match. Um, some people probably think they're obnoxious. I never minded them, and it'll be fun because I think they're just fun switches. Like they're cool, man. <laughs> I don't know. I put one on my dad's PC as a power switch. However, that's a momentary switch. Because when you power on a PC, you don't want it to like keep giving power to the power switch because that's not how it works. It's just supposed to be a, uh, a momentary switch. But these need to be toggles. Um, we actually sell a bunch of momentary switches on PVCs. However, we do not sell any toggle switches for some reason. So I bought those off Amazon. <laughs> if you guys want the link, uh, just like comment or something, I'll try to get that. Just got here, which fluid is requiring more maintenance? Um, any kind of 3D coolant. I have some 3D coolant from UFO here, or CryoChill's uh, UFO coolant. Uh, and it's a 3D, it's a mica-based 3D coolant. And one, any 3D coolant, you always want to make sure your loop is like perfectly clean before you put it in. 
Um, and even go as far as like making sure it's dry. Like, I mean, not bone dry, but not any like pockets of distilled water hanging around or anything like that. Uh, because if you like water it down, technically, it's supposed to not work as good uh, or it has a chance. And same thing with view. You don't really want to add distilled to it as far as I know. So just any 3D cool. I mean, there's always been Mayhem's Aurora if people aren't too new and they remember Mayhem's Aurora. I mean, it's still around. But um, that has always just been considered a show coolant. So everyone's kind of always known not to use that in a loop for 24-7. Although I have heard of cases where people have run Aurora for actually like years. Uh, I think those people just actually do put in the extra time to making sure that their 3D coolant is uh, actually going to be in a clean and susceptible loop to it, I guess you could say. So I'm not for certain if this is totally tight, but I guess we'll find out if I were to leak test it. Ah, uh, so what if I put this angle adapter up here? Oh man, these fittings are actually pretty darn big. Oh man, see you later. If I could screw in a fitting, that would be pretty awesome. Come on, buddy. These threads on this ball valve seem a little odd. Maybe they're as tough to get started. I don't know what's happening. It feels like I'm stripping it. These are like 25 bucks a pop, which actually isn't terrible for if they actually work. But to get them to work, it seems like it's going to be quite the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that will not screw in. That's wonderful. Huh. How does that work? Who pieced out? Unsweet iced tea. Thank you. Just getting into water cooling. Yeah, and that is kind of just one tip. I mean, it sounds rude. Like, I really don't like excluding anybody from water cooling. I mean, I'm not technically saying I'm going to exclude anybody, but as far as 3D coolants go, and if it's like your first loop ever, I would really kind of shy away from it just because if something does go wrong, it's probably going to give you like a pretty big headache being it your first time. And uh, you're probably just going to have a bad taste for water cooling in your mouth after that. Uh, unless you're fully prepared to do that. If you're fully prepared to, uh, you know, like I said, have your loop down for a few days for cleaning, then more power to you. Try it out, see what happens. And it could be fun and it can work out just fine. I've seen plenty of loops that run 3D coolant and it's works just fine. And I've seen other loops where it falls out and like I said, you have to sit there and clean your loop for two days because it's everywhere. <laughs> but, okay, so that one screwed in, I think. Maybe it's just that angle adapter is weird. Who knows? But now I think this is too high because it's going to hit the bottom of this guy. Ugh. I guess we'll see. If I put a compression fit in here. I was trying to plan it even like <laughs> all day yesterday, or not all day yesterday. When I got the fittings, I was checking them out. I started playing with them, and then this morning I've been playing with them for a few hours. and. It's still confusing me, which is why I thought somebody might be able to give me assistance, but... Sorry, say again what you're trying to figure out. Oh, uh, Calf, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to get uh, these two ball valves to come directly off that radiator. Like, they could technically be anywhere in line. However, I need the ball valves off the radiator, and then I've got two sets of T-fittings, uh, or just one T-fitting each that will make it so the flow can go to the front of the case here where I will connect them to the bulkhead disconnects. So it's just a lot of fittings to get lined up in this kind of short amount of space. Um, but with enough like guessing and testing fittings, I will figure it out. I was trying to get one at least figured out for you guys today. Like I said, I want to get this loop done this weekend or at least functional, maybe it won't be in its final form. Like, I still got a mix match of fittings. So I will we'll have to buy more fittings eventually because I just can't handle this right now, but I'm dealing with it quietly. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it could sit on the bottom of that. Eh, I don't like that. See, I think I need to... How would I get that? Like, I want to use... 
this like a non-rotary male to male right here because that'll lower the height down as long as I have like the valve like turned or whatever I think that would work Ooh, except for I think it's too wide um, I don't know why it won't turn into what it's stuck I think it's too wide the doors will get stuck on it hmm yeah so this is going to do something crazy like a spiral twist a spiral twist somebody actually just asked me about that um somebody on facebook i did a while ago like a month or two ago probably i think it was in Decem december i had a stream so you can check it out on our youtube or our uh twitch it might still be on twitch it's on facebook if you can find it somewhere in there that's a mess though uh where i did actually yeah. take ptg and i like i wrapped around a pvc pipe and heated it up and it worked I got it to wrap like twice, I think. If I had two people, like I would, if I were ever to do it again, I would have another person to sit there and use two heat guns and heat the tube with me and like hold it and let me wrap it. Like it was, I don't know. Either you need to make some kind of a mandrel so it can hold everything for you or you just need a friend. And after I tried it, I got it to wrap like twice. But what I found out, even with like my Alpha Cool insert here, which is probably one of the loosest inserts for like, this is 12 mil ID. And this stuff, like, you can put it in without, like, there's not even water on this. Uh, I can bend fine with this. However, when I wrapped it, it just got so tight around the uh, insert, I actually had to cut the tube off it in, like, six places. Like, I could not get the insert out with anything. I put soap in there, olive oil, sat there with water just running through it, and it would not come out. So what I was actually figuring, I don't know if anybody's ever actually done it, but I'd almost just fill your your piece of PETG with sand and then do it like cap off the ends. Like I don't, um, you could just get some kind of a, you just use a G quarter, I guess. And then, uh, you cap it off with like a female to female and fill it with sand and then bend it. Uh, because the sand will just act like your insert. And then when you're done, all you gotta do is dump out the sand and you're good to go. Cause the insert, I think if you ever tried to make any sort of a tight coil, like the coil that I made wasn't even entirely too tight and it was only two times around and that insert did not even budge. <laughs> so it's kind of tough. So what are we, what are we doing here in chat? What's up, Rob? What do you want, man? I'm watching my phone so it's not big enough for me to see the little space you're working with. I always draw with pen and paper to figure out. Yeah, see, and that, what I usually do is like, I'll take a, maybe here, I'll switch to not this one there so maybe this will make it big enough but i'm just trying to get the two ports from the rad to have these magnetic ball valves off of them so i can shut off flow to them all the while having to get um these 180 t's in in here somewhere too so i can split the flow so i can get tubes to the front of the case for these bulkhead disconnects so i have to fit 180 t's and ball valves into this area somewhere <laughs> uh and as you said like drawing it is usually like the best way to go however these are like a goofy freaking fitting like i i don't know if anybody else has any experience with these if you guys do i would love to see pictures of how you guys put these in your loop and just what you guys came up with it might help me maybe it doesn't but if you do feel free to share uh because i'm still struggling with this and it's probably just going to take a bunch of test fitting still and I can sit here and do that as long as you guys want to watch it's just uh, I like I said I'm just guessing and checking still <laughs> but as soon as I get it done I'll be testing uh, maybe do you guys want to see how about I'll ask you guys now um, who's ever watching right now should I test either the opaque alien green I guess this is UV too and I can get some UV strips in here somewhere so it like glows on the reservoir and stuff so I could get this probably to be UV and test the UV as well as it being an opaque coolant. His opaque line is what's new. This is a 3D coolant and this is actually white with blue UV. So you guys pick whichever one you want me to test in this loop first as soon as I get it done. As you guys can see, I have a mess of fittings still. So who knows when I'll actually be able to figure this whole thing out. But hopefully this weekend I can get it figured out. Uh, but like I said, you guys pick whichever cool. Actually, I think it's on this camera now. Is that easier to see? Pick a color, guys. Green or he says, so we got white. Calf says white. Rob, if you're watching, what color, buddy? It actually looks super yellow on the camera. It's it's not that yellow. It's 
It's very yellow, but it does have green to it. And when you put it with UV, it actually is pretty decently green. I think Kitten said she was going to watch, but uh, this one, hopefully she'll be able to share a bunch of pictures with the, the purple pink. I think it's pink. She said it's purple pink. But it says just purple on it. Cosmic purple. I think everything's cosmic. So I got cosmic gray matter. But here, I'll take this out of the lineup. And watch, Rob says. Rob, pick white or green, buddy. What do you say, Gerald? You say white? I think I'm probably leaning towards white, too. Technically, it'll match. Although, it might blend in with this white reservoir that I made. But I guess we'll just see what happens. You'll be able to see it in the tubes. Do you want it to pop? Or what's your end goal here? Are you looking for a pop or what? Well, what do you mean? Like, I I just have to test these coolants. So I was just asking what you guys want to see first. Either the 3D starlight white. So this is, that's a 3D coolant. Or the opaque UV alien green. Actually, both are UV. So... Alright, so the white I'm most interested in. However, yeah. I do think it'll pair best with your build, so I think you should keep it for the last and just keep it right in the back. Yeah, and I that's that's actually probably the best idea because as someone asked earlier if I had tested uh, the 3D stuff long term, I've tested it for several weeks at a time without too many issues. Daniel's tested a lot longer, but I have never actually had a chance to like run it for months. Um, I ran it in that blast define S test loop where it all actually fell out. And technically, the loop would have still worked just fine. There was just, it was just clear coolant <laughs> with a bunch of particle buildup on the bottom of the reservoir, which really does nothing to the loop. There was nothing like, there's a little bit of stuff in the block, although I think that could have been from something else anyways. Um, but really, the tubes are clean and clear. Uh, the pump is fine. There was no like buildup anywhere except for at the bottom of the flat part of the reservoir. So it really didn't hurt anything. It's just, it lost its effect. And like I said, if I would have picked it up and shook it, which I could still do with this bench too, if it starts to fall out, you just pick it up and shake it and it goes right back into the coolant. That's what's kind of interesting about Daniels is that if it does separate, it seems to always go back in as long as you can either get enough flow through it or you can freaking shake it. <laughs> One of the two. Sometimes flow is hard to get though. Before you install, you would just give it a solid shake. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, cause if I if I let this sit here without moving for a few hours, I'm pretty certain it will get pretty clear throughout it. I'm not actually the white seems to not fall out as much as from what I can tell. It's hard to see the 3D effect in the light, to be completely honest. Like, if you just let it sit here, if you look really closely, it shimmers, but you don't really see like the soap look to it or whatever they say. Up close, you can see it, but I don't know. Hold it up to your. Uh... That's focused on your table. That one seems to be a little bit sharper of a camera. Oh, the the one close right here. So I switch cameras. That's Robert. Uh, yeah, it, that's in front of the banana. In, in front of the banana. Yeah, this is this is pretty yellow green. It's not as yellow as it looks, and this is three D. <laughs> So, I don't know. Like you said, I think probably I'll go with the white just so I can actually maybe try to do a long-term test on it. Even though I might be tearing this loop apart again, I can probably make it so I just drain it and put it back in as long as uh, it hasn't, like, died by then. Uh, so, I was thinking I might remove the pump for now so I can get the fittings on. Who's even chilling? We, got, we still got people hanging out. That's kind of cool. For a Saturday afternoon. Like I said, if you guys are working on a build, uh, talk about it in chat. Like, I'd love to hear you guys' projects this weekend. This is kind of just what I decided to do. It's really kind of random. But we're doing it anyways. And to get this pump out, it's actually going to take me a minute. I'll switch the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Not that camera. That camera. Oh, keto. Yeah. What up, people? Rob? My weekend build doesn't get a start till Monday. Well, I guess I could do part of it today. Fair enough. Is that when your parts are coming? Where's my screwdriver? So, uh, all that's happening is I'm just altering the ghost, the ghost rig a little bit. The ghost rig? Is that like your land build? or? No, I, I'm calling it that because uh, remember how the, the liquid mixture looks like a super 
Spooky ghost loose here, guys. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I remember. No, yeah, you got that rig. So you're um, waiting to work on that? So um, on Monday, I'm supposed to get this RGB strip from um, Mad Hat. From who? Oh, and, oh, Mad Hat, I remember in Discord? Yeah. Cool beans. So if I get the... Uh, 360 long but thin radiator, do you think that would be good enough for to feed a graphics card directly? Yeah, 360, like 30 mil thick. Yeah, one of your thin ones on the site. Yeah, I'd like to go with a Hardware Labs GTS, but yeah, for a 360 on just a GPU would be plenty. Because I got a 240 fat for feeding my uh, CPU. Okay. Yeah, that's plenty for a CPU. These are. I'm going to have, like I said, there's going to be a dual loop, uh, and it will have, these are 240 by 60, so one will be for the 5930K and one will be for a 980 Ti, which the 980 Ti might actually push the 240 by 60, but I guess I'll find out. Uh, I guess I could always try a different radiator, although this is kind of built for <laughs> uh, these rats. I could get some like 240 monsters though, I guess, from Alpha Cool. I've got room above them. Uh, this fitting is so stuck. I nearly got it though. And then we can remove the pump, ladies and gentlemen. And maybe figure out how these freaking ball valves are gonna go in. Okay. We got the two valves. Awesome. Now to get the pump out. Oh, uh, I'll be back later, maybe. All right, dude. Have a good day. I'm probably wrapping this up, anyways. I don't know how much more you guys want to see me just mess around with fittings. Um, let me know if you guys got any questions about what I'm doing and feel free to, I'd be happy to elaborate on the project because it is still kind of, it's still very much a work in progress. And there's a lot to figure out. But have a good day, Gerald. Thanks for stopping in, man. And to the rest of you watching, feel free to stop in our Discord anytime. The link's at the top of the screen. Um, well, not really a link, but you can type that in, otherwise I can link you in a second. Oh, by the way, the fix is in for the CPU, right? You're just handing that over to me? What's that? The fix is in for the CPU, right? You're just going to hand that off to me? Oh, yeah, sure. All right, good. Just want to make sure we're still good for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're now, solid. If I win, if, now if I win, everyone's going to call bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I haven't even mentioned that. If you guys see in the in the banner ads there on the bottom of the screen, we do have an 8700K and Supremacy Evo giveaway going on. Well, it, it hasn't actually started yet. When we get to 1,000 members on our Discord and 5,000 members in our Facebook group, which we're actually pretty close on both, uh, last time I checked, we're like well over, I think we're getting close to like 875 on Discord, and we have like 4,800 on Facebook, so I would honestly anticipate within the next week or so that giveaway is going to start, which is, like uh, Gerald was saying, an 8700K and a Supremacy Evo. So that's a pretty cool giveaway, so guys, definitely get on our, if you're watching on Facebook, clearly in your, you're in the Facebook group. Otherwise, join our Facebook group, join our Discord. And uh, when we get to those member goals, here, I'll link you guys right now while I'm sitting here with my teeth in. But uh, once we get to those goals, we will do, we'll be doing those giveaways, and uh, you guys all will have a chance to win. So let me see. Invite people. So here's Discord for you guys. Uh, and then the Facebook group is right here. For the rest of y'all not watching on Facebook. So, if you guys come and join in, like I said, chance to win some pretty cool gear. Uh, and it is going to be open like worldwide and everything, so I don't care where you're from, man. Just come and hang out. This pump was a little bit of a pain to bolt down. 
so that's why it's going to take a lot. I used uh, 30 millimeter rad screws. So I'm honestly going to have to get a little bit better of a mounting option going here eventually. But for now, it holds the pump in place, which is all you really need. Yeah, both those uh, or both the Facebook group and our Discord are a great place to get in touch with me if you guys ever do have any questions about the projects that you're working on. If you're looking at PPCs for some parts, I'm always happy to help you guys find the right stuff. Uh, it is actually funny getting these magnetic ball valves that are giving me such a headache. I actually didn't even find myself. Uh, my buddy Carlos found this for me the other day, and that's what ended up making me order all this stuff. So, there's lots and lots of parts out there, so I know it can get very confusing, especially if you're new to this stuff. So don't hesitate to ask questions. I'm usually able to try to find the answer. If I do or not, that's just a great question in itself. Okay, we got the pump out. Thank God. Now we move all this crap. want to take off the fans too but I don't know if I can without taking the rat out. I suppose this coolant is in the way now. So let's see here. I honestly hmm this is difficult to say the least. Because if I were to take the fans off, I guess actually if I use this handy dandy I fix it screwdriver, I don't need to take the rat out, I bet. Actually, I only need to take off the end fan. So where's the, the regular screwdriver? This one. Come on out. I hate this. It's a lovely little tool kit. But getting these damn bits out. always a pain in the butt. So, oh man, it just fits. Is this screwdriver too little? Do I need the bigger one? I thought that was the biggest one. Hmm. Sure. Maybe I want this one. Too many dang bits. It's working. So, does anybody have any questions yet? I'm glad Cap was stopping in and he was attempting to figure this out with me, but it's honestly just going to take probably more time than what we have today to stream. And this screw is being a pain in the butt and I feel like I'm stripping it, which would not make me happy. And it is stripping, I think. Is this just going to be that big of a pain? Do I have to take this tube out too? I guess I should have just started with an empty case today, huh, you guys? Planning a loop takes lots of time and patience. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. This screw is just not being my friend, though. Get out of your hole. It is just stripping. Not cool, bro. Oh my. So I might have to take the rat out just because of that damn screw. Yeah, this one comes out just fine. Except for, I have to run it at an angle here, it's hitting the top. Seems like a ratchet wrench screwdriver. Been streamed for longer, or are you running out of interwebs for the day? Almost used up my daily allowance. Um, no, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm happy to keep this going. We're here to figure this out. That's for dang sure. 
I'm just wondering how interested people are in seeing me struggle with this and put things in and then take them out and <laughs> try something new and then remove more things. Uh, it's just all up to you guys. People seem to be hanging around and liking it. Just wondering if you guys have any questions or concerns, even if it's not related to this project at all. If you guys are working on your own projects and you're having headaches like I am, feel free to bring them to our attention. I'm sure everybody in chat would be happy to help, and so am I. So, don't hesitate to ask people. I mean, I haven't been water cooling forever, and I'm not the most experienced by any means, but I've done quite a bit, so I usually know what I'm doing, but I think anybody that water cools knows that when they start a project, it's really hard to know what to actually do. You may know how to do something, but when to do it and how are two completely different things. And this screw, I swear to God, I'm going to throw you away. I think I've almost got it, though, to be honest. I think it's a thermal pick screw, guys. Press F for respect for this screw, because like... Okay, it is nearly there, but it does not. This has got to be the best, most interesting stream you guys have ever seen. There. Wow. That was hard. Jeez. So, now we should finally be able to get this fitting on. And to be honest, maybe I want to put, maybe I do want to just put both ball valves, both magnetic ball valves straight off the radiator. We'll just put the back one on first then. Is this actually still a good angle for you guys to see this? I wonder if I can mess with the lighting. It's kind of tough to see in there. Hurt. Does that help at all? Return the light. Do you guys see the light? As I mentioned, this one's going to have to go directly to the pump, which is kind of a pain. And this actually can't stop unless it's off to the side, because <laughs> the fan's supposed to go right there. Wow, that's actually bad. Mm, I don't think that's going to work, because this is where it's... Oh yeah, that does not get any tighter, and the fan won't go there. That's for certain. Hmm. That ain't gonna work. We gotta try something else. I mean, I could honestly still move the pump. I just drilled four holes. The pump wouldn't have to stay there necessarily. Uh, the fan does have to go in the back. So if I put a fan there. We can kind of see what we what kind of space we've got to work with. So a fan's gonna be sitting right here, just like that. And this guy could actually it's gonna be the blades will be like that. So with that cable. This cable is probably gonna make noises. I guess I could just zip tie it somewhere. Maybe if I move it back an inch there, maybe that will work better. Um, because I still have to get this port to there, unless I were to switch the ports on the radiator around here. So I do kind of like the pump out going to CPU in, and then it goes CPU out to reservoir in, and then I have a bunch of ports on the reservoir around here too that can make it go from the reservoir to the radiator in, and then the radiator out. But, I mean, I could totally reconfigure the loop. It wouldn't have to go like that, to be honest. Hmm. So, if I got rid of these angle adapters and said screw doing it like this. Sure, I've got a crazy one. How can I securely mount a GPU straight up and down in front of a motherboard to appear like it's floating in front of the mobile? Oh, like a vertical GPU? Uh, so, for that, I've done that mod myself. Um, several times in builds and stuff. I always just made like an acrylic, uh, either just a bracket 
or in like my evolve right there i don't know if you got here you guys can kind of see it so my gpu is actually vertical and that i actually just built a whole panel in the back of the case and i built a new pcie slot bracket essentially out of acrylic so if you know how to work with acrylic or you have before i mean it's really not hard i've i've even got i could find the video for you i've got ideas but i'm very open to suggestions so like I said, there's the DIY approach, which is what I always did. However, I know for a fact that Cable Mod is currently working on, um, they are working on a, just like a, a bracket that pretty much works in any case. So let me see if I can show you, or no, it's on PPCs actually. The video where I uh, did a vertical GPU mount. Come on YouTube, work. Go to my channel. They want me to change my picture. Videos. Um, so let's see. It's a little bit of an older video. Loop. Uh, new monitor mod. Here we go. So this video right here. So I'll put this in Twitch chat for you. But there is how I did it in my personal PC. I'm not going to... Oh, it's not going to be at the back of a case. Think wall PC. Um, it's floating in front of the mogul. So are you using like a core P5 almost? Like, a, like I mean, obviously, if you had a core P5, you wouldn't be asking this question, clearly. But are you referring to... I'm trying to think of what... That's, a, that's kind of a... Yeah, you got just as big of headaches as I do, man. <laughs> what are you doing? What are we doing? This is bad. Um, to make it float, that's a good question. I would have to say, if you could build something around, like, because obviously you're going to have to use, like, a PCU, or PCU, PCIe extender ribbon cable, whichever one you pick, maybe make the entire bracket off of that, like, like house the, the PCIe extender in acrylic, so that's technically like a stand. So technically the PCIe slot would support it all, which may be somewhat wobbly, but if you got it on your wall and like you don't have like a windstorm and you don't have like people bumping it, I would think that it'd just sit there just fine. So if you kind of just built a bracket, like I have a GP right here. And actually a ribbon cable. So if you had your GPU and then you had this one already is actually at a 90, so this is actually pretty decent. If you built this into like an acrylic stand, you could straight up, you know, just plug in your card. And if I knew how to plug in a freaking graphics card, sheesh. Um, so if you just had your card just there like that, then there's even holes in this. Like I would straight up just mount this and even just like a pedestal or like I said, a, a shroud of some sort to go over the ribbon cable too, trying to clean it up. But that, I mean, if it's just sitting there, it, it may wobble a little bit, like if you're gonna bump it, or if there's like a lot of breeze or something, sure, but it should be just fine. That's probably where I would go with it. I don't know if that helps you at all, or if you've already considered that, but if, it, if it's got a float there, I mean, no matter what, you have to have a PCIe cable attached to it, so kind of use that as your starting point, I would say. So that's a good idea it's a very custom set that's dope i mean that's i've been building this bench from the ground up like i 3d model it and stuff and i've been putting it together everything's done been done by me besides the stuff that's laser cut got that done at ppcs however everything else has been uh pretty much just me figuring stuff out and i like the idea of a scratch build this has been fun even though it is kind of just a headache <laughs> right now at least right now it's kind of just throwing me for a loop Literally, the loop is throwing me for a loop because of these dang ball valves. They, they, I definitely want to get these in here. It's just going to take figuring. Lots and lots of figuring. <laughs> I probably should have put more time in this, but I just actually got these on Friday, and I hadn't streamed for the whole week, so I did kind of want to show you guys what I was doing. But I think for now, we'll probably close her up for the day just because uh, I'm going to have to sit here and play with all these different fittings continuously. Uh, but I do actually have some other work to do today. Or not necessarily work, but it's Saturday and we have all got stuff to do. So I don't want to keep you guys, but I will keep you updated 
on what's going on with the loop. I'll get you guys some pictures this weekend in Facebook and Discord if you're around there with uh, what I do actually come up with. I appreciate Calf. You you definitely were trying to troubleshoot it with me. I think there were some other people in here, so I appreciate all you guys coming in and trying to figure this out with me. But it is still just a work in progress. And come Monday, uh, hopefully I will be able to test the cooling. If not, maybe I will just talk to Daniel and we can get him in on the stream. And if you guys just want to see more about these coolants, I know everyone's pretty interested in the 3D coolant stuff still, even to this day with, with all the issues with whatever brand you pick, there's, there's been issues with every brand. So there's been drama, but there's still a lot of people quite interested in stuff like this. So if you guys want to stop in the stream Monday night at seven, I'll be here. Uh, we can either, if this loop is running, then we'll be testing this stuff. We'll be putting it in there and testing it. If uh, not, we can just chill and hopefully get Daniel in there and he can tell you guys all about, because these are new, the opaques. This I don't think he'll sell just because I asked for this color. However, this purple pink, this will be for sale. The UV alien green, that'll be for sale. If it isn't, it, it actually isn't yet, but PPC's got it, so it should be soon. And to be honest, we can just chill and talk about coolant if you guys want. Some people are pretty interested in it today. So I figure maybe we can continue on that on Monday. Entirely up to you guys. So let's see here. Not this one. There we go. So thank you everybody for stopping by. Jesus, my hair. <laughs> uh, don't forget about the giveaway. It was just on the banner below there. Uh, so definitely get in our Discord, get in our Facebook. Uh, come and talk to us, just chill. We can answer questions. Whatever you guys got, we're always happy to help. So please come on in and join the community. Is there a black? I really want a black 3D. He has like, yeah, there's like a galactic black of some sort. Uh, let me see if I can get you his coolants real quick. Yeah, he has, there's like 25 different colors. And actually, you can ask him to make you a custom color. That's uh, one of the options here. Let me get you the link. So you can, if you have like a particular color and we, or he doesn't make it and we don't carry it, uh, you can order the custom color and hopefully have him figure something out for you. He's a pretty industrious fellow, so I would think he'd do his best to get what you want. There's this though, there's midnight, or no, galactic black right there. There's midnight silver, but it's like kind of purple. So that's not really black, but this right here, the second link I'm giving you there, is uh, galactic black. <laughs> so that might be what you want, I'm not sure. But, like I said guys, if you guys do want to talk more about the coolants and stuff that I plan on testing in this loop, once I get those fittings in there, uh, feel free to you know, keep following the streams and we'll cover that as well. But I hope you guys all have a great day. If you guys are working on your projects yourself, good luck. And come back here for help if you want. Maybe I'll be hitting you guys up on Facebook and stuff for help because I'm still lost. But we'll get there. So till Monday, guys, I hope you all have a fun weekend. And I'll see you then.